Hello to my beautiful family of light, love, truth, trust, and harmony. That's what you are. We're all children of God here, and I welcome you to my channel. My name is Claudia, and I'm happy to have you here with me today. So God is present in our lives in so many ways. Plus, we have an inner compass and an inner guidance system. We have all this angelic help around us, things that you can't see. See, uh, which is uh, the, what really the occult is, the things that are hidden from our view. But when I was 30, I had an ex well experience that of God in my life, and I want to share that with you today. In order for me to get to there, I have to start back to when I was 10. When I was 10, my oldest brother had his neck broken in a high school match wrestling match. He became a complete quadriplegic. A quadriplegic has no use of his body from his neck down. And now he was able to develop over time strong shoulder muscles and and with braces and whatnot to be able to use those uh, so that he could type and, uh, and feed himself with certain specialized um, utensils and that sort of thing. But he, other than that, he couldn't even turn over in bed. Okay, so here is this completely um, uh, handicapped individual who is de completely dependent upon others for his survival. And um, so at the age of 10, I became a uh, part-time mom to the four younger siblings in the house and um, and that persisted well into my 20s. So by the time I was 30, I had some resentments built up <laughs> for a life for losing a chunk of my life from, I'm going to say, 11 to 22 when I moved, 21 or 22 when I moved out. And I went to my mom with the the single purpose of getting an apology for having such a disrupted childhood. And um, I sat down with my mom over coffee at 30 years. You're, you're an adult, or you think you are anyway, but you're still harboring these, this anger and resentment towards, you know, these events. So mom looked at me, and with all the compassion she could, what she said to me was, what could I do? But that's the way things were. I mean, we really had no choice. And um, and I left frustrated because I didn't get an apology. Now, I understood it's the way things were, but, but something in me needed that apology. Okay, on my way home, I stopped for gas and picked up a local newspaper, went home, had some supper and sat with the newspaper and, and I turned right to, I can't remember if it was Dear Abby or Ann Landers at the time. And uh, there was right at the, right in the very first story was a, a woman about my age, 30-ish, uh, who said, you know, she had a horrible childhood and that, you know, it went, seemed to go on and on and that she never got an apology from anybody for that. And she really was harboring some anger and resentment and yada, yada, yada. And uh, the reply was so significant to me. I cut the article out, but her reply to this woman who who was uh, still living in the past was, oh my dear, I am so sorry that had to happen to you. It's not fun when we have to experience those things and can't move beyond them. She said, so okay, you're 30 now, so when are you going to get over it? <laughs> How long is it going to take? <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I am I can laugh now, but at the time, this, this little zing of shame went through me, and I heard the words, so when are you going to get over it? I use this, I don't use that phrase. When I use in my practice is, 
to have people imagine they're standing on the mountaintop on a on a ledge up there where you can see what's behind you. It's what you've lived. It's where you've been. You have a clear understanding of what you've been through. You understand the feelings that you're dragging along with you at that point. You understand, and you can be wearing a backpack or be dragging a, a chain or a wheelbarrow or whatever you want that you have that you're carrying all these things in. And I have the person turn around and walk up to what's a crossroads. This is an important place in your life. And I was at that crossroads when those words were given to me. When you stand at a place that you can't see what's left, what's right, what's ahead of you, you only know what's behind you. You are at a choice point. You get to choose. You get to choose to take off the backpack with all the stuff that you're carrying in it. You ch get to choose to unshackle the ball and chain that you've been dragging with you. You get to choose to let go of the suitcases, the mountains of anger, fear, resentment, all of those things that have been, you have been carrying with you. You can't see what's in front of you, I realize. But if we keep going to the past, all we can do is live those moments. When you can't see what's in front of you, what you have is a blank canvas. You get to paint it. You get to create your world. Now, how do you do that? Creation is uh, thoughts. Our thoughts are how we manifest and bring into our lives the things that we want or need. Do you want a better job? Then write down all the things that you want knowing what you have already experienced all the positive all the positive attributes of the job of the lover of the relationship of the car of the place you want to live of the travel you want to experience of all the things you want to do positive aspects and then begin a gratitude uh, journey of every day adding to the positive lists, adding to and being grateful for all those things that are present in your life. Because you're thinking them, your inner guidance system, your God-given inner guidance system is manufacturing those things for you and preparing to bring them into your life. The more you stay away from where you've been, and focus on where you want to go and what you want to do and your present happiness and be happy in the present, in the moment. All those things on your list will begin to come to you. They'll begin to come into your life. It's called manifestation. So that's a pretty tall order, isn't it? If I can help you in any way, <laughs> Let me know in the comments below or go to my website and contact me. I'm happy, happy, happy to help you find your inner joy, your inner happiness, that inner compass that will get you there. So thank you for joining me. I want you to know that you're loved beyond your imagining. I love you this much. Those arms extend all around this planet, all inhabitants, and to you. And um, until we meet again, be, um, oh, you can find more information about me by clicking on the description below. And um, click like and subscribe. Share joy with others. Uh, it's a very positive way to be and to live. So until we meet again, be well, be safe, and be happy. Thank you.